previously on Terran's second channel. Oh my god, those are very pink doors. Oh yeah. That's nice. It's magenta, darling. It's pink. This is a fight we you have all the time. You and your magenta. It's an important distinction. So you say. Magenta is a non-spectral color. Pink is just light red. It's pink. Ah, more pink. They're, that's pink. And that's pink. not pink. People get violet so wrong. It's one frequency, not two. Yeah, my eyes are glazing over. Can you please read this entry? I think it says pink. It says <laughs> magenta. Furthermore, that's the pink. You're so smug. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> All right, listen up, everybody. I might make this into a video at some point, but for now, I'm just going to go totally unscripted. This is important? It is to me, and I was so confused about purple, magenta, pink, etc. for such a long time. Violet, so confusing, because I kept getting different answers, so I finally just sat down and I figured it all out myself. Now, we have to start with the electromagnetic spectrum. You've probably seen a picture like this before. This one's fine, let's just look at it. There's lots and lots of these. I like how in this one they show the size of the wavelength, although for our purposes that's actually not that important. One thing to know about how the electromagnetic spectrum is commonly um, drawn is that no, no wavelength of light actually looks like this. This is just sort of a shortcut. The wavelengths up here would look like that the whole time. Uh, the wavelengths in the middle would be like this the whole time. And then the wavelengths up here would be like this the whole time. The point is that they're just trying to show a bunch of frequencies um, all at the same time. They've just taken all of this stuff and they've kind of squished it down into one single drawing. But no single photon of light is going to move like this, where it changes its wavelength as it goes. Um, this is just something that's like very minorly possibly confusing, so I just thought I'd clarify. Anyway, with that aside, yes, the, the band of light we're worried about is, you know, somewhere in here, and then we've expanded it out to show you what it looks like with visible light. Now, I don't like the way that a lot of charts do this, where they just kind of have it cut off just abruptly here and here as though your vision just stops right there. And then what, what is there beyond here? Well, it's actually much better in a chart like this, see this, where you kind of just see it kind of fades away, kind of fades away into blackness. Although it's not really blackness, it's just the lack of being able to see a thing. Um, because what this kind of implies is that if you are a bee or a deer or a mantis shrimp or whatever, that there would be extra colors all in here. Yeah, you can see with the mantis shrimp, it has, I think, 12 uh, different photoreceptor sensitive cells. Humans have three. And you can see, see these dark ones? Those are colors that we cannot see. And so what color do you use for them? Well, you just have to draw them in black because we literally don't have a color for them. So whatever. The point is that you cannot see any frequencies above violet and you cannot see any frequencies below red. That would be infrared and above violet is ultraviolet. And then it goes into, um, yeah, X-rays, gamma rays, uh, microwaves, radio waves, depending on the direction you go. And the important thing that I want to get across to you guys is that what the brain does when it sees something that is both blue and red is it basically hallucinates a whole new color. And that's magenta. Notice how magenta is not on the spectrum. It is not here. It can be helpful to think of the color wheel not as a wheel but as a screw. You see, this part overlaps with itself, not in reality, but in our human brains, which is the point of the color wheel anyway. It's not a real thing. Now, the weird thing is, why does violet look like it's slightly purple? And for that, I don't have an answer. There's this website I found that goes into an enormous amount of detail. That's not it. Uh, I'll, I'll just put it up on screen here if I can find it after I make this recording. But like this stuff goes super, super deep. So anyway, <laughs> when I was in the process of trying to learn and understand all this stuff, I made this graphic. This is all about 
how exactly do we bridge the two opposing ends of the electromagnetic spectrum? Th this is just my own opinion, I guess, but I found three different ways to do it. Uh, basically using the uh, gradient tool in Photoshop, which if you put red on one end and blue, let's get pure blue, 255, blue on the other end, what do you get? Ooh, perceptual, linear, or classic. Oh, this is new. But yeah, you can see that there's just different ways to bridge the gap, either decreasing the brightness or the saturation or both of whatever color is in the middle um, to achieve different results. And, well, you actually could say that the way that they were bridging colors was wrong because they were uh, not accounting for gamma in the calculations with the old way that they did it. And this is a whole thing. You can watch the uh, minute physics video about color is broken and learn about that. So you can see that with the old method, you have this kind of ugly brown. It just gets darker. Whereas with the newer method, see, this is more correct. Uh, yeah, so I did it both ways. And that's the difference between this and this. And with this bottom one, instead of going directly from red to blue, I went from red to magenta to blue. So yeah, so it's this, but if I manually make it magenta, then that's basically the one that I've got here on the bottom. And if we change it to linear, then it's just, that's what happens. Classic, that's what happens. But as the Minute Physics video explains, there is an objectively more correct way to do this for most colors. Now, uh, I also put these swatches on here because I was trying to figure out like, okay, what, what do people typically call these colors? I found that there's no name for this color here in the middle. Um, is it purple? Is it magenta? Whatever. It's like a dark magenta or a bright purple. Eh. Um, this is like a better purple. Lavender is an extremely vague color. This is one that I was always confused about. Well, turns out <laughs> it's whatever people want it to be. And pink, pink is a bright red. Pink is not a bright red and blue. That's what magenta is, okay? The other trouble with this, with this chart is that it's showing the pure frequency of these colors because that's what a spectrum is. And as such, there's, there's no room for um, less saturation, which is what the swatches are about. These are like samples of less saturated versions of these colors, which would still qualify as being those colors. As far as the hue is concerned, pink is a version of red. So there's so much misinformation on the internet. In my comings and goings, I found this article. What color is this? Is it pink or is it magenta? People are arguing about it. And this guy, he claims to have the answers. All pinks are magentas, all magentas are purple. This is wrong. This looks like, oh, there's so much information here, all these charts, he's speaking with authority, but he's fundamentally wrong right here. Pink is a desaturated form of magenta? No, it's not. And he's saying right here, this is all the colors the human eye can see? No, it's not. This does not show a lack of saturation. This is just pure saturation to white. So you might think, oh, where's pink? Oh, it's like, it's like here, right? No, pink is here. It is a brighter version of red. And also, well, you would need 255 of these graphics, each one of them decreasing in saturation to truly show all of the colors that your computer monitor can display. Uh, sort of. I mean, it depends on, like this one does have it, uh, th this is more correct to how it works. There's, there's lots of ways of like showing the colors uh, with different axes uh, doing different things. Now this line of purples thing, this is very interesting. Here, right here, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> One of the most useful things I ever learned about how color works is what follows. This line right here, this roundy round round line, this is the purest form of a specific hue. 
in such a way where if you have a red laser, it will always show up somewhere on this line here. A red laser light, because that is the pure frequency. And if you were to tune that laser, it's not really possible, but just imagine that you could change the color of the laser, it would always follow this line. Now it's becoming a yellow laser. Now it's a, now it's a green laser. It will always be on this line. You've got more of a cyan laser now. And finally, we're going down to blue laser, uh, violet laser. And finally, you'd be ultraviolet laser would be somewhere down here. But the chart doesn't include that because this is just about human perception. That's why it is impossible to get a color that is somewhere out here. It does not make any sense because this is the edge of what colors can do. And what your brain is doing is bridging the gaps between those pure frequencies to create this line of purples in your brain. Which is why in my graphic, I have this little bit up here, which I think is just so clever. What you need to do, and here's the uh, more verbose version of this graphic. What you need to do is look at these two images and cross your eyes. Cross your eyes until they overlap. You might have to stand back a little bit. I'm going to step back a little bit. And then just kind of look at this zone right, ooh, at, at this zone right here, the, the, the blue and red zone as it overlaps. And, and you will be simultaneously seeing red and blue. Um, the way that I see it is like one color kind of comes to the front and then the other color comes to the front and, and, and they kind of, they just, they just keep fighting over the area. Large parts of it rather kind of uh, are feathering in and out of being either blue or red, but there's no real purple there because your brain is not set up to properly combine them when they're coming from two different eyes. But when you've got blue and red coming in from the same eye, your brain interprets it as purple or magenta. Now, when I say purple, um, as you can see here, purple is just, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a darker version of magenta. These are the same hue, right? Hue is not exactly the same as frequency. Because as you can see on this line of purples, hue and frequency are exactly the same for all of these colors. But as soon as we get beyond red and beyond blue, now you enter the line of purples and there is no frequency associated with these colors. They are non-spectral colors. So back to the graphic real quick. We're almost done here. Um, I still need to find a proper uh, photograph of a prism which appropriately has violet on it because this is the final piece of the puzzle. This camera does not have violet, so I, I really need to swap out this picture. I can see no tinge of red in here, and there should be a little bit, and uh, like this. This camera, whatever it is, has a, a filter for violet. And um, here's another thing that people get wrong. Let's see if anybody is showing the wrong information. Here it is. Ha 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 ha. Extent of light we can see. This is wrong. This is wrong. The human eye does not work this way. This is how cameras work. You guys, this is how the human eye works. The only reason you can see violet, which is over here, is because there are still a little bit in here. And I don't know, somehow your brain figures it out based upon just a little bit of extra information. But there is not an extra node of red sensitivity where it comes back up right here at the end. And as you have just seen, there are some cameras that don't have this bump. And as a result, instead of this image, you get this image. There should be violet light here. There is, but the camera doesn't pick it up. So there's so much misinformation about this. And here's the funny part. According to the XKCD color survey, people do in fact think that this is pink. That's not pink. That's magenta, as I've just explained in great detail. 
Now, this is also only showing the most saturated colors, so it would be interesting to see how this changes as you go through the various amounts of saturation. I do love how everyone has a very specific idea of what color gold is. And then you've got mustard. That's funny. Who can say where one color begins and another ends? Well, here's a survey that shows it. With all that said, it doesn't actually matter in the everyday. Most people call this color pink, and it's fine. It matters if you are a professional painter, video editor, colorist, I don't know, camera manufacturer, then you really need to use the right terms. Especially if you're teaching or making tutorials like I do. Yeah, so I need a proper image. If you can find like a public domain one or shoot one for me, I don't have a prism. Uh, so I can put it on here because this whole graphic is public domain. I know there's a lot of text on here. You can read through it. Uh, I guess I'll link to this in the uh, video description, but like it's all about how do you bridge the gap? So your brain theoretically absolutely could work this way where let's grab the reds and desaturate them. Oh, oh, right. It's okay. It's not okay. 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 I see what it's doing. Okay. I would actually have to go to the channels. Interesting. Uh, and go to the red channel. Interesting. Just going to delete it. Yeah. So here we go. This is how your brain could work. Where violet is just, it's just another blue, right? There's no re- At least I don't know the reason. And this is something that I'm still confused about and still need to do more research. Like, why does violet look like magenta? It's got a little tinge of red in it. Here it is without the tinge of red. Here it is with it. But it's not red. It's violet. It's not red plus blue. Violet is its own frequency, which looks like it's purple or magenta but it's not, it is its own thing. And I'm also not sure, like what if we had four cones that could see, you know, four different frequencies of light, would the color wheel be more of a color figure eight? Would it be like a color four wheels in one? I don't know. So still need to, still need to figure it out. And that's kind of why I have not made the video yet. If you know why violet looks violet, you let me know, because I'd be very interested to find out. So I would say that pink, yeah, pink can have a little bit of blue mixed in, but <laughs> to call this pink is technically incorrect. Let's put some real pink on screen. There's your pink. You can add a little bit, a little bit of blue in there. Pink. Uh, oh, one more thing that I forgot to mention is your computer screen does not have violet subpixels. There is no violet light coming off of your screen, which is why if we sample this color, uh, you'll see that it's, you know, using red, green, blue notation. Yeah, the point is that because this is all in RGB, this color here is, yeah, is pretty much the same as some of these colors over there. Again, your monitor does not have violet subpixels. So instead, it just uses a combination of red and blue to simulate violet. And this is the same thing as the fact that your monitor uses a combination of green and red to simulate yellow, which is also kind of weird to think about. But for violet, it's actually even weirder because it's like a double abstraction. It's it's not only like just a frequency that happens to be halfway between these two on either side, but in fact, it's not halfway. It's completely off to one side, uh, and yet it still works. It, it still works fine. So yeah, I just thought I would mention that to really just make this a complete little lesson here as unorganized as it was.